This is a short video about the production function, just to give you an example um, of how we can think about it. So we're going to think about uh, production in a very simple way. We're just going to imagine that some product, I'll just call it the output, we could think of maybe an agricultural output, is produced using some fixed inputs, maybe something like a given amount of land, for example, and some variable inputs, maybe some machinery, some equipment, some time that people spend uh, cultivating a field or something like that. And what we could ask is what's the relationship between the inputs that we're using in various quantities and the output that we're getting. That's just what this production function f is telling us, is what's the relationship between these inputs and the outputs. Well, we can illustrate that uh, relationship just by graphing the variable input uh, along this axis and the amount of output that's produced by that variable input. That is a, an input that we can vary in quantity. Obviously, the fixed inputs are fixed in quantity. That's why they're called fixed inputs. So what's the story that we could tell about the relationship between variable inputs and what gets produced? Well, it's pretty obvious that if we start with zero variable inputs, like say we don't have anybody to work in the fields, then we're going to get zero output. But if we send a person uh, with maybe some tools out into the field to produce something, uh, we could call that one unit of the variable input, and that person produces something. We could then ask, well, what if we used two people to go out in the fields and do some work and try and produce some corn, as is discussed in your text, or something else? Well, we get uh, a different amount of output. In this case, I'm assuming the total output is 15. So what's happened is that the first person produced five units of output, and by adding a second person, maybe with some tools or something like that, we got output of 15. And suppose we add a third person to this production process, and this tells us that our total output would be 30 units of whatever it is we're producing. And so we could just continue and ask, well, what if we use a fourth person uh, this is saying the output is going to be 40. A fifth person raises output to 45. A sixth person adds maybe just one unit of output. So there's, there's sort of a story being told here about the relationship between the inputs that we're varying and the amount of output that we're getting. And the story is something like this. If we add uh, some people to this production process initially, you can see that it's raising production quite a bit. Maybe they're specializing in the tasks that they're doing. Maybe by having a second person, uh, they can kind of cooperate in a certain way that uh, allows output to be raised. But what this is also telling us is that beyond some point, which I've illustrated by this dotted line, the extra output that we're getting is getting smaller and smaller. The real reason that that's happening is because we've got these fixed inputs. And the variable inputs have only got so much in the way of fixed inputs to work with. If we think about an agricultural example, let's say we have uh, a certain amount of land, for instance, then we could use more and more people to work that land more intensively. We could add more and more um, you know, units of fertilizer and, uh, and other kinds of inputs like that. But there's, there's a limit to how much we can squeeze out, given that we've got these fixed inputs sort of limiting uh, the total amount that can be produced. So it's a story like that that lies behind the shape of this relationship. Now, there's another way that we could tell this story uh, a way that is exactly the same, but just a, a slightly different way of illustrating the same information. So let's have a look at a different way of presenting exactly the same information. This is called the marginal product curve. Now, as you're going to be familiar, 
with this term marginal, I'm not going to have to explain this too much. This is just saying how much extra product, how much extra output do we get by using some more of this variable input. Again, we can imagine sending extra people out into the field to produce some crop. So the story that we told earlier with the total product curve is seen here. The first person who's sent out into the field produces five units of output. When we add a second unit of this variable input, that person adds 10 to total production. So we could just add these two together, 5 plus 10 is 15, to see what total product is by using two units of this variable input. Well, if we add the third person, that person added even more to output, in this case 15. So our total product was 5 plus 10 plus 15, or 30. And we saw from that story uh, earlier that as we add additional units of variable input, what's happening is we're getting less and less extra output. We're still getting something, but it's getting smaller and smaller. So we can tell our story in terms of um, a range of inputs for which we're getting increasing amounts of extra output. And then beyond some point, we're getting decreasing amounts of extra output, or what's called decreasing marginal product. So we sort of have these two zones, a zone of increasing marginal product and a zone of decreasing marginal product. I should just add, though, that that may be OK. We may want to actually produce in this area because it really depends on how much we have to pay for our variable input and the value of what it's producing. So in general, what we're going to see is that production will take place in this area of decreasing marginal product. OK, now let's have a look at the relationship between the production function and costs. Because after all, it's costs that are really going to matter when firms are trying to maximize their profits. So we have to see what's the relationship between these things. Well, what we looked at before was this relationship between variable inputs and the amount of output that we were getting. That was the production function. And that earlier example had showed that there was a zone of increasing marginal products and decreasing marginal products. That's just what this dotted line is showing us here. So what I'm going to do is show the relationship between uh, outputs and costs. So when we think about costs, I'm going to show costs uh, in this picture down here. And I'm going to show how they vary, how they change as output changes. So output is changing because we're using different amounts of this variable input. That's what we saw when we looked at the production function. Now, costs are obviously going to be related to the inputs that we're paying for. So you'll see in your text that total cost is divided up into two parts. One is fixed costs, which is the cost that we're paying for the fixed inputs, maybe rent on land or something like that if we're thinking about agricultural production. And then we've got variable cost. Could be costs of uh, the labor that we're hiring, uh, the fuel that we're using, maybe fertilizer, uh, seeds, things like that, uh, that we're using to produce our, our crop. So we're going to add to variable costs whenever we hire more variable inputs. So we can break, as I say, total cost down into the fixed cost, which isn't changing, obviously and variable cost, which is increasing as output increases. So the purpose of stacking these two pictures up like this is just to show how there's a relationship between this zone of increasing and decreasing marginal products and what's happening to our total costs. So let's just go through the logic here. If we just look at total costs, we can see that there's a fixed cost, which just says, even if output is 0, we still have some things that we have to pay for. 
then if we want to produce some additional output, we're going to have to hire some additional variable inputs. We can see how output is increasing. Down here, we can see how output increases. What's happening here is that our costs are going up. And our costs are going up because, of course, we're hiring more variable inputs to produce this extra output. Now, I've drawn costs increasing in a special way. You can see how the costs are going up, but they're going up more and more slowly. Well, why is that happening? That's happening because as we're using variable inputs here, we're getting more and more extra output for each unit of the variable input that we're using. So our costs are going up, but they're going up fairly slowly because we're getting lots of extra output uh, as we use more inputs. But beyond this point, where marginal product of these variable inputs starts to decrease, so that back with the production function, we're getting more output, but smaller and smaller amounts, what that means in plain English is it's just becoming ever more expensive to produce extra output. So our costs are rising at an increasing rate. So the point of drawing these two diagrams like this is just to remind you of the relationship between the decreasing marginal product that we saw when we thought about the production function and how that's leading total costs to increase at an ever faster rate. So you could imagine, perhaps in the most extreme case, that eventually we could add some variable input and get no extra output. Well, that's simply going to increase our costs without increasing our output. So this is um, the relationship between the production function and total costs. The next thing we're going to look at is the relationship between uh, marginal products and marginal costs.